Excellent. And as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll run this really strictly for 45 minutes. Um, uh, this is a great chance to ask uh, any questions, uh, comments, any queries you have about the auction, the process, uh, the hospice itself. I am, by the way, um, in front of the hospice, the hospice de nuit building. Um, and, and away we go. So um, this is the first time as Honest Grapes bidding at the Hospice de Nuit. We've had some notable successes in the previous uh, two years with the Hospice de Bonn, and we've realized that there's a, a real appetite amongst our club members and uh, loyal clients for this sort of activity. And it is, it is really exciting, it is really good fun. And I was fortunate enough to be out at the Hospice de Nuit last year, where I met Emmerich, um, and we had a, it was a remarkable experience. And I think that if the Hospice de Bonn is quite well known, for sure, and is a bucket list for many Burgundy lovers, the Hospice de Nuit is fast becoming one. And so we are absolutely delighted <laughs> this evening to have with us um, Emmerich de Cluet, who is an independent wine expert who advises and consults for the hospice and is very much involved in the collateral around the hospice, uh, the event itself, um, and is going to take us through the sort of the history of the hospice, uh, the auction process, um, and any questions on the wines. And then we're also delighted to have uh, Laurent uh, Delaunay with us as well. Laurent, head of Maison Edouard Delaunay, who has become a fast friend in, in a relatively short space of time in the last uh, two or three years. Wonderful, wonderful winemaker. Uh, have been so impressed with his wines for the, the last two vintages that we have done en primeur. And we're delighted that Laurent has agreed to um, conclude the élevage of our barrels after the hospice. After that, I think there'll be a bit of uh, obviously time for questions that you have and any comments. Please do use the chat as vociferously as you as you wish to ask any questions you don't want to um, ask live or unmute yourself. And um, as I said, we'll, uh, we'll attempt to, to finish this off in about 40 minutes from now. So thank you once again for joining. And Emma, if I could pass over to you to tell us a little bit more about this amazing um, opportunity and the hospice itself, the history and the vineyards. Thank you. Ah, that's uh, for me to begin. Okay, so um, uh, very briefly, that's the 60th uh, anniversary of uh, the auction at Hospice de Nuit. Uh, it's a young uh, wine auction compared to uh, our prestigious um, colleagues. Uh, but in fact, the hospice date back to the reign of Saint Louis, that is uh, 1270. So it's a very old uh, hospitality uh, uh, building. And uh, this particular building dates back to the reign of Louis XIV. So that's for the history. Uh, the principle is the same um, with all hospitals in uh, Burgundy. Uh, it's uh, gifts from um, uh, wine growers that uh, gave some parcels to the domain. Uh, the domain has um, uh, eight parcels of uh, village wine in Nuit Saint-Georges and in Gevray Chambertin, two as, uh, one as well, uh, and nine premier cru. In including the Les Didier, which is a monopoly of the domain. That's for the, the geography. And um, uh, what can I say? The vintage, maybe. Uh, we are very pleased with the last three vintages, actually. But it's a little bit like 88, 89, and 90 in Bordeaux. Uh, we have a very good 2018 vintage, but maybe a little bit short. Uh, 2019 was um, again a very hot vintage, but uh, still very good with a bit of more, more length and complexity towards 2018. And uh, last year was, how can we say, the perfect vintage once again. Uh, it was again a relatively hot vintage, but 
with less uh, stress because the water supplies were quite good until beginning of July. And after that, uh, we had more acidity in the wines. So we are very pleased. That was really the good surprise that uh, we have very powerful, very interesting, very uh, uh, complex wines and a bit of acidity as well that balances uh, the level of alcohol. So we are very pleased with the wine. We think it's uh, for this type of vintage, which, which is a new style of Burgundy, of course, in the last uh, decade. Uh, we are very pleased with this added acidity compared to some other vintages. And Emmerich, I, I was lucky enough to try the um, various wines out in November with uh, Jean-Marc, the winemaker. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning just before people were joining us that you had tasted even more recently, of course, and you know the wines are showing very, very well indeed. Certainly one thing that surprised me was how supple the wines were. And again, that freshness, that freshness, which I think a lot of people were perhaps a little concerned wouldn't be present given the, the droughts, the heat stress, but clearly there is lovely balance in the wines. Do you think this is because uh, Nuit Saint-Georges itself is starting to overperform in these more solar vintages? Mm, a vast question. I think we, uh, we, I think the, the teams uh, at the domain and uh, throughout Burgundy and especially in Nuit Saint-Georges adapt to the new conditions. That means, for example, that we started the harvest on the 27th of August. Uh, it was uh, a way to keep the freshness in the wine. And, um, and the flower was very early this year, so it was uh, the right uh, time for uh, the ripeness of the grape, but it kept the acidity. It's uh, almost uh, 13 days earlier than last year. Uh, again, the Pinot Noir is showing very good adaptation to uh, the new conditions of harvesting. And that's uh, pleasant. That means that for the future, uh, the, the Pinot Noir maintains a freshness throughout hot vintages. Yeah. And uh, last, of course, I think everybody in Nuit Saint-Georges has made tremendous efforts in the last decades, not decade, decades to, uh, as an assemble with new producers, dynamic one, young producers that are famous now in Nuit Saint-Georges, and that's uh, um, an assemble uh, of uh, wine growers that are making better wines also. It's not only the domain. Excellent. And, um... Uh, on the subject of you, you mentioned, you know, the acidity in the grapes, we have a question here saying it would be nice to know the berry size, level of alcohols, the methods of vinification and the percentage of whole bunch that we see in the wines and the hospice. Uh, the level of alcohol is between 13.5 uh, and 14.2. So it's a little bit less than last year. Uh, I haven't my notes here, but I think the, the acidity is 3.7 grams. Um, so it's uh, high, higher than last year. And um, whole bunch, the uh, percentage of whole bunch, does it vary from cuvee to cuvee? I, of whole what? Oh, of um, uh, what, would you, what would be the French expression, Laurent, for whole bunch? Um, Ah, de so it's 100% distilled. Okay. 100% distilled. Uh, the the way uh, so as I said earlier, for but for those who weren't present, uh, it's uh, um, only indigenous uh, lees. Uh, we never make more than one operation a day. That means that sometimes we do a pigeage, no, no more than five, but mostly four or three. Uh, pigeage, I wouldn't say, can you translate pigeage? Yeah, the, the punching down. The, the yes, punching down. exactly. Yeah. That was only three or four 
uh, this year and only one remontage Pump, never pumping over, over. Pumping over. <laughs> pumping over. Thank you. Merci, Laurent. Avec plaisir. Uh, pumping over uh, a day, never more. So basically, the wines are hardly touched during the vinification. Excellent. Excellent. Um, maybe moving forward now for those who aren't familiar, but the maybe you could explain the, the process of the auction, that sort of, you know, how, how it sort of how it sort of works traditionally. Obviously, this year, I'm assuming it will be largely, if not totally online with a few people uh, like Laurent uh, present. But um, how, how does the auction work for those who aren't familiar? We could say that it's mostly uh, people who give bids to uh, Laurent and uh, his competitors, of course, uh, because You know, for most people, it's easier to give the bids directly to the negotiant elver who will, um, who knows the auction and uh, who is able to um, uh, adapt to the condition of the auction on site. Some people will be online, some on the telephone, but most people will give bids to uh, their negotiant elver because that's the more, the safer way of uh, making things and uh, and uh, the way to adapt to the results at hand. And with regards to the quantity of wine uh, this year, I was just trying to pull out my notes, in fact, by, by comparison to 19, um, more or less wine than last year. Uh, it's uh, less than last year. It's 10, 10 barrels less than last year, which, was already 20 less than the year before. So the drought was uh, effectively beginning of August. There was uh, two or three very hot days that uh, had us lose a significant part of the harvest. Plus the, the grapes were very, very nice, very, in very uh, good conditions, but they are not a lot of juice. Mm. Uh, it was very concentrated, so you needed a little bit more grapes to make the same amount of uh, of juice. That explained why we had uh, 10 barrels less than last year. And um, another question was, do you have an idea at this stage how many people will be bidding? I suppose a lot of people have registered. You know, is there a, a rough idea? A rough idea that's real bidders, that's about 50 people. Okay. But you have an additional 10, 15 that uh, may intervene at any point. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the, rogue, the rogue cards there, the wild cards. Yeah, excellent. But they need to be registered this year. There, is, there will be no exception, no last minute registration. Everything is fixed. You know, the seats are It's limited. Bad. So everything is uh, well registered in advance. And then perhaps you could just unpack the uh, the process of the auction itself because you know there are a number of cuvées there are a number of barrels within each cuvée um, again just for our, uh, our, our guests absolutely how, how does it all work well it really depends uh, we sell one barrel at a time but within a series of five barrels you can take the four additional wine ones from this for the same price that means that if you take well not the first one because it's only uh, two barrels but if you take uh, uh, nuit saint georges les maladières which is a village where we have uh, uh, 16 uh, barrels you buy the first one in the the, the series num uh, numbered a you can buy the four barrels. And then we move to the B series and uh, the bidder for the first barrel can have the additional three. So that's how it goes. Yeah. So nobody can buy all the cask or they have to bid each time for each series. But if you take a smaller parcel like Les Pores Saint-Georges, 
you only have two barrels, so the first bidder can have the second one and have the exclusivity on this particular appellation. And um, until quite recently, the Hospice de Nuit was, I mean, for how long has it been open to the public, like, like ourselves, to, to come and bid? Oh, throughout the Negocian Elver, it has always been somehow open to the public, but the real first year was last year that we uh, publicized the fact that it was easy to come to make contact with a Negocian Elver, to have uh, to buy uh, um, um, a cask and have the Negocian Elver uh, do the work afterwards. So that's really the one year that we publicized the fact. Yeah. And, and I think that's, again, for, for everyone who's joining us this evening, this is why the opportunity really excites us so much, because, you know, we'll be amongst the very, very first, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, get your hands on, on bottles from the Hospice de Nuit. And because everyone here is to one degree or another a, a serious Burgundy lover, um, it's worth unpacking the style of, of Nuit Saint-Georges because perhaps not everyone tends to immediately go for Nuit Saint-Georges um, uh, as, as an appellation, as a village, but the, the, the style of the wines and certainly the style of the wines that the Hospice makes, there's, um, uh, there seems to be a very good balance of, of suppleness, but also quite a lot of richness uh, and quite a lot of power. As uh, uh, Jean-Marc, the winemaker said to me, uh, you know, ne pas chambol <laughs> musigny. You know, these are not, you know, very, very delicate ethereal Pinot Noir. They have structure, they have power. In 20, they certainly have wonderful, um, ripe and expressive fruit. But the attractive thing, and as I mentioned, the surprising thing is this vein of acidity, which really keeps them fresh and keeps them balanced, as, as, as you said, Emmerich. So, you know, we are, we are very, very excited indeed. And then the next stage of the auction, um, having successfully bid on our barrels, we, we hope, um, is uh, we are then in the hands of our good friend, Laurent, um, who I'd like to hand over to now. Perhaps, Laurent, you could um, tell us a little bit more about, about your family, about the, uh, the Maison, and, and then obviously how your role as the Eleveur takes shape. Uh, first, yes, thank you, Tom. First of all, can you see me? Because I have a small internet problem. I hear you, but I can't see you. Can you okay. see me? We can see and hear you absolutely fine, or at least... Okay, great, can. great. Yeah. That's only me. Um, so I'm <laughs> Laurent Delaunay from uh, Maison Édouard Delaunay in Burgundy. Uh, yes, we have a, a very special uh, history here in Burgundy. Uh, the house of Édouard Delaunay was created by my great-grandfather uh, in uh, 1893, so uh, quite a long time ago. And it stayed in the family for five generations until my father sold it in 1993, after 100 years, uh, to some other uh, players here. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I think... So we I think long. we've just sold the estate again. <laughs> <laughs> um, hang on. We're, we're, well, a, a, apologies, team. We'll have to. Nathan, if you if you could keep an eye on when Laurent re rejoins us, then we can immediately uh, let him back in. Um, um, well, in, in his absence, I'm sure Laurent won't mind me filling in um, until, he re until he rejoins us. Uh, I had the great fortune of meeting uh, Laurent, I think it was just two years ago, yes, at a, at a fantastic lunch at a Hyde uh, with Jancis Robinson, um, Hugh Johnson, and it was, the, it was the, the sort of the rebirth of this wonderful historic old maison who had uh, been the uh, distributor for um, La Romanée, uh, for Domaine Romanée Conte, um, and then um, I believe had been sort of sold to uh, one of the larger houses in the 70s. Um, and then was um, uh, Laurent uh, and, and his wife, uh, very successful winemakers, uh, but more so down in the south of France. 
uh, where they formed uh, Bade Cleme, um, um, which is a, a very successful sort of winemaking operation with a lot of holdings down in Languedoc, Roussillon, um, came back and, and wanted to effectively yeah, um, buy back and recreate this wonderful mark, this wonderful maison. And, you know, the first vintage was 2016, or the first new vintage in about 25 years, I think, uh, was, um, was, uh, was the 2016 vintage. And then along came 2017, a vintage which I know all Burgundy lovers particularly enjoy, myself very much included. And we were, we were delighted by the 17 vintage. And so I remember asking Laurent, who had a very heavy cold at the time, what are you doing about the 2018 vintage? Because this was in sort of November time of 2019. And, um, and so said, well, gosh, uh, you know, uh, you know hadn't, hadn't given it much thought. And we immediately said, look, we'd, we'd love to offer your wines uh, en primeur. And we did, and it was a very, very successful campaign. And Laurent joined us in London for a series of tastings. And some of you were with us, I'm glad to say. And, um, you know, we, we got off to a flying start. Then, of course, uh, 2019 vintage has come along, has been hugely successful. And in between, uh, Laurent's uh, winemaker has won the IWC Winemaker of the Year. So, you know, from a, from a standing start or from a, a newly standing start, the Maison has, has really catapulted itself into a, a very formidable position. And one of the reasons that we were very keen for um, Laurent to uh, complete the élevage of our barrels is because what, what I've witnessed, this, um, this remarkable sensitivity to specific vineyards, specific cuvées. There is no formula in his winemaking, which is brilliant. It's not, it's not like we apply the same amount of oak, the same amount of, uh, of different activity um, according to, uh, sorry, to, to every single wine. Each and every barrel is, is, is given its uh, ample opportunity to express itself. So we really wanted a winemaker who would not put anything in as it were, uh, but just allow the best of the vineyard and cuvee to come out. Um, so <laughs> this is this is why uh, we uh, we have gone with uh, with with Laurent uh, this year, and we're very very excited to see um, to see how things turn out. I I just noticed uh, an, another uh, question. Uh, in the chat on um, the interplay between um, red and black fruit and does the vintage lean more towards one or the other. Um, um, Emmerich, you, you tasted more recently, so would you say, you know, a red fruit character or black fruit character, a combination for the 2020 vintage? Uh, hmm. The closest thing I could say is that, oh, I don't know if it answered the question, but it would be uh, definitely hints of a black cherry. So, which is technically a red fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's an interplay, you could say, but uh, I would say black cherry is the closest hints that we could find in the wines as a general character of the wine. And, um, and one other question whilst we're, whilst we're back on the wines themselves. Um, in terms of the ageability of the hospice wines, in your experience, you know, are these early drinkers, mid-term, long-term, and, and also, you know, again, with reference to the vintage? It's a very good question. I wanted to add this as well. Uh, it really depends on the, the Premier Cru and the village themselves. For example, Les Vignes Rondes, which is a vineyard close to uh, Von Romanet, has a definite, very supple character and is almost ready to drink after two or three years in the bottle. Uh, it is probably the, the earliest wine that is immediately drink drinkable in the, the hospice. L'Emerger, on the contrary, is an extremely mineral wine and uh, needs probably seven years to be uh, really at its um, approachable 
period of drinking. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, Les Didier and Les Saint-Georges, which are two of the best parcels of the domain, need more years. Um, Les Didier, you have three different cuvées, so the young vines. Of course, at the Domaine de Nuit Saint-Georges, the young vines are 40 years old. Uh, and the old vines are 70 years old. So that's uh, when we say young vines, uh, it always makes me laugh because that's old vines for many growers. But uh, in this particular case, of course, the young vines will age a little bit quicker than the old vines, which need more time. And Les Saint-Georges, definitely the cuvée uh, Georges Fevelet will need 20 years to be at its peak. And for example, 2005 is still uh, not ready to drink yet, but that's also the vintage. Yeah, I, I remember trying the 2005. Back. Back. And, oh, and look, Laurent is back. Perfect. <laughs> well done. Brilliant. Well, once again, Laurent, like much, much like the Maison itself, you've made a fantastic, uh, a fantastic return. Um, so please do um, take off where you uh, where, where we left you. Please. Over to you. So I don't I don't know exactly where you left me. What what did what did I say? I, I yeah. very little, to be honest. <laughs> I think oh, I'm sorry, because I kept <laughs> I kept talking, but I did not realize that I have lost you. Um, when you no, decided was... <laughs> to come back to Nuit Saint-Georges. Yeah. Pardon? Well, sorry? So, when you decided to come to Nuit Saint-Georges. Yeah. Oui. Uh, so, yes, I was telling you uh, about my our, our uh, special history. I don't know if I spoke about our special relationship with the Hospice de Nuit or not. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. That. So, yes, uh, as... Uh, as Emric as explained, uh, he, he, he spoke about the history of the Hospice de Nuit. Uh, it's only uh, since 1961, it's the 60th birthday uh, this year, that the Hospice de Nuit wines are sold on auction. And uh, before that, it was sold as a kind of uh, direct agreement between the Hospice de Nuit and some local negotiants who had special relationship with the Hospice de Nuit. And my family uh, has always been part of that. We have always kept a special uh, link with the Hospice de Nuit. And before 61, uh, before the, the auction started, uh, it even happened that some years we were the exclusive uh, distributor and uh, eleveur of the Hospice de Nuit uh, wine. I still have, I'm still very lucky to have a, a few old bottles of the Hospice de Nuit from the 50s and the 40s in my cellar and the 60s. And since the um, auction was uh, settled in 61, almost every year, uh, my father uh, kept the, uh, the uh, habit of bidding uh, at the Hospice de Nuit auction. And almost every year, or every year almost, we have, uh, we have, we've had the opportunity to purchase a few barrels. And um, I have um, even a special memory uh, at the, uh, with the Hospice de Nuit, it's probably one of my oldest memory in the wine trade in Burgundy. I think it I was something like 22 or 23. And this uh, specific year, uh, my father uh, was interested in purchasing uh, a cuvee at the Hospice de Nuit, but for some reasons, he couldn't make it. I mean, he couldn't attend the auction. He had some other obligations. And I was 22 or 23 and he said, it's your turn now. Uh, I can't, I, I'm not available, I can't be at the auction, but on Sunday, uh, you will go at the auction and uh, you will do your best to try to get the cuvee in which we are interested. This is the price limit and uh, it's, it's your turn to do it. So I went there, I was very impressed, I was very intimidated, uh, I was very young, nobody knew who I was, and I started to bid on the, the specific cuvee. And I remember that all the, 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 the local big negotiators were looking at me, who is this young guy that we, we don't know? And I had to fight a lot, but finally, finally I, I got it. And it's a very strong uh, memory for me uh, starting in the wine trade uh, at that time. Thank you, Laura. And, and I also know that as well as the hospice, you are, you know, um, certainly one of the foremost champions of Nuit Saint-Georges specifically, which is, you know, a, another reason why we're so delighted to have you uh, completing the Elevator of Our Barrels. Why is Nuit Saint-Georges special for you? 
So Nuit Saint-Georges is special for us uh, because that's really where my family is originating from. Uh, that's really, uh, that's, that's where we are located. That's where our offices are. Uh, it's a terroir that we know uh, very, very well. Uh, it's a beautiful terroir actually, uh, and with a lot of diversity between the north and the south of Nuit Saint-Georges. That's what is for me especially interesting. It's one of the villages, it's probably the same for many others, but it's one of the villages where you can find the most diversity between the different terroirs. And it's uh, the premier cruise from the north, the premier cruise from the south, uh, test very different. Uh, and it's, it's one of these uh, villages where you can really illustrate what the, what, what the climate of Burgundy are. Uh, you can really show when you, when you show several of the premier crews uh, the differences which are only due to the soil, uh, to the geology. Uh, as far as we are concerned, we have now in our range one village in Saint Georges, but we have six premier crews uh, from the south to the north. And uh, we love this appellation. You asked before uh, Emmerich uh, a few minutes ago, uh, if the, the, vigne, the vignerons from uh, Nuit Saint-Georges performed, overperformed uh, this year, I think, um, I think Nuit Saint-Georges is probably one of the villages uh, which uh, answers the best to the, to the climate change, indeed, because it's, 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 it's a specific appellation where uh, due to the soil and due to the to the amount of stones that we have and to the minerality that we have in the, in the soil, we, the wines of New Saint-Georges have always had a kind of natural acidity, probably more than some other villages uh, like von Romane and so on. And so uh, it was even considered 10 years or 20 years ago as a kind of, uh, uh, of, of drawback of Nuit Saint-Georges. And sometimes people were saying oh, the, the wines from Nuit Saint-Georges with this level of acidity and tannin, when they're young, they can be a little too austere. And what was a drawback 20 years ago is now an asset. Uh, and this natural acidity, uh, which shows how the, the Pinot Noir is resilient to the global uh, change, to the global uh, the, the, the climate change, uh, is probably now an asset uh, with the, these days uh, changing climate. Yeah, it's it's interesting actually, Laurent. For, for me, I've been um, I've been sort of putting together my my final list of my own Burgundies from the nineteen vintage that I want for myself. And yes, there's several of yours amongst there for sure. But but I have been comparing my tasting notes, and this this was the nineteen vintage, um, and I, I'm increasingly drawn. To Nuit Saint Georges, you know, from from across different producers, um, you know, there's uh, there seems to be something that's special that is happening here right now, and and obviously as well, I think there's a there's a great value opportunity as well with Nuit Saint Georges. So I, I you know, I'm 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 very excited about the, the present and the future of the Appellation. I think so. I think there is a great potential, and compared with the other villages of the Côte de Nuit. Uh, the wines from New Saint Georges, generally speaking, I'm not speaking about the OSP uh, specific, but are slightly better priced. Uh, there are still a lot of discoveries. As Emmerich explained, there are a lot of new young growers. There is a new generation. And I agree, there is something going on in New Saint Georges. Thank you, Laura. Now, uh, we've had a, a couple of um, interesting comments and qu queries here to, to uh, return to. Um, uh, the the cuvées that we are we are looking at um, the question is do they have a special microclimate in terms of elevation and sun exposure important in a solar year and another and a question linked to that was is the natural is the natural acidity why you distend just to unpack that um, Laura I'm not sure if I think you were still with us but we were but Emmerich was saying how the hospice wines are 100% destemmed. So we, we might have to split that question into, into two because Emmerich might need to answer on behalf of the hospice uh, with regards to why the, the wines were destemmed. But maybe, um, maybe Laurent, uh, you could 
uh, deal with the first part of the question, which was about the the sort of you know the the, the cuvées which are in our shortlist, which include, of course, Le Didier, um, um, also Le Boudot, and potentially Corvée Page, but particularly the, the Le Didier and Boudot, I think. What was the question exactly? Sorry. So the question was: Do, do those um, um, uh, do those particular cuvées that we have kind of earmarked as being of interest? Um, do they have a special microclimate in terms of elevation and sun exposure, which is obviously important in a solar year, as you've mentioned? I think it's um, all of them, of course, represent a kind of microclimate and so on. Um, in Nuit Saint-Georges, uh, with the, the, the different premier cruise of Nuit Saint-Georges, you play on, on both uh, going north to south, and it's surprising in such a short distance, but it can make a slight difference, uh, especially, especially north of Nuit Saint-Georges, uh, the soils are slightly deeper and more clay, whereas in south of Nuit Saint-Georges, you have much more stones uh, in the soil. And you play also slightly on the altitude. Uh, for instance, some village appellations like uh, Les Maladières Les Brûlés uh, are really uh, at the level of, of the route nationale. And, and when you go slightly higher on the slope, uh, you have, first of all, uh, more slope, slightly higher altitude. We are talking of, of a, a few meters or, or uh, uh, 10 or 20 or 50 meters or something like that. And you also have often more uh, stones uh, in the soil. So it, that's what makes the difference. Uh, les, cuvées, les corvées pagé, for instance, it's very much in the south. It's uh, in uh, promo prissé, whereas les Didier uh, is uh, close to Les Saint-Georges, slightly south of, of Les Saint-Georges, but uh, it's also on Primo, on Primo Pissé, but it's the first vineyard on Primo Pissé when you come from Les Saint-Georges. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, there is a slight difference, but it's more due, to my opinion, to the, 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 the difference of soil, soil, or the slight differences of in the soil and geology. Mm. Thank you, Laurent. And um, Emmerich, if I could return to you for the second part of the question there, um, you know, answering on behalf of uh, Jean-Marc, um, do you think that it's the, the natural acidity in Nuit Saint-Georges, which is why the hospice continues, or at least this year, was 100% destemmed? Uh, it's customary. It's every year. So there is a... Um... Well, to my opinion, no specific uh, reason except the fact that uh, Jean-Marc likes very silky tannins, um, which uh, in uh, solar years can be uh, obtained even with uh, whole, uh, whole grapes, but uh, um, he's used to work that way. Uh, that is a subject for discussion in the future. For now, it... Uh, it is um, customary in the domain. As we say, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, excellent. Um, oh, now a, an interesting question from Nicola here saying, and I suppose, <laughs> um, how, how much will COVID subdue the usual auction festivities? Um, and will it be live streamed? Well, I, I doubt very much it'll be as lively as it was last year, um, sadly. But uh, what, 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 what is going to happen around the auction? Will, will there be any? I will answer for the festivities, and Laurent will answer for the live stream. Maybe uh, the festivities are all cancelled, and even for the team of the with the auction house, we are not authorized to have lunch at the Chateau du Clovougeau, so we are very sad um, about that, but uh, there is no festivities organized around, no dinner, no lunch, no festival of chocolate, no running around Nuit Saint-Georges, which I didn't participate last year huh, anyway. <laughs> uh, and uh, Laurent will answer for the live stream. Mm. For, for the live stream? Uh, yes. the, the, the live okay. streaming of the auction, um, Laurent. Um, will, will, will it be live streamed? Uh, what do you mean by live streamed? Uh, will it be? There will be cameras and yes. uh, people will be able to follow. 
Yes, yes, I think it's a great uh, initiative for this year. Uh, we, as Emric explained, uh, we are very uh, frustrated that there is uh, there are no festivities that nobody can visit. Uh, normally, it's a time of the year uh, where we are very pleased to welcome uh, visitors from all over the world and so on. Uh, it's a very good timing, actually, because uh, the wines in March are starting to, to, to show uh, very well. It's a good time for coming and discovering the new vintage. So we are very, very frustrating that we are not able this year to have any festivities. We are not able this year to welcome any visitors. Uh, that's the way it is. And so it's a very good uh, initiative from the Hospice de Nuit uh, to uh, broadcast uh, the auction uh, through internet uh, because, because you will all be able to follow that, uh, to follow the event uh, on internet and to have the impression that you participate with us. Um, as uh, Emric explained before, I think we are, we are going to be about uh, 50 professional Burgundy buyers uh, in the room with also people from uh, on the telephone and on internet. Uh, so we'll try to do our best to, uh, to, to do the job on your behalf. Um, but uh, we are frustrated not to, uh, to have all of you with us this year. Well, Laurent, we're, we're coming to the end of our allotted time. Um, before, uh, thank you so much, both of you very much indeed for unpacking so much of the detail uh, of <coughs> Of, uh, of how the auction is going to run and the history and the wine itself. Um, to that last point about the slightly uh, muted um, um, activities around the auction, part of what we are offering to members of the syndicate is we do intend to come out and visit you when we can. So we know we can't do it at the time of the auction, but we are very much looking forward to organizing um, hospice members trips uh, out to Burgundy at such time as we are actively allowed to do so. And we shall certainly be in touch with you all about those opportunities. Um, now, uh, I think uh, Nathan, I'm gonna hand over to now just to run through a few of the logistical points uh, to round up. Uh, thank you, Tom. And uh, a huge thank you to Emmerich and to Laurent for participating with us. Um, you're an hour ahead of us, so we're keeping you even more from, uh, from your dinner than, than we are from ours, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, thank you so much, everybody who's already joined the syndicate. Um, amazingly, uh, we have um, 57 out of 60 shares um, already committed, so if anybody's interested, we have three further shares. Very happy to take half shares if anybody wants just a few extra bottles to add into their collection. Um, Tom has already tasted the wines, um, as, as has Laurent and, of course, Emmerich. We've made a short list of the cuvées, but to some extent, just as with our syndicate for the Hospice de Bern, um, we're obviously dependent on uh, making sure that the budget we've put in uh, stretches to buy the barrels that we're looking for. Uh, so we're looking to buy five barrels on behalf of the syndicate. Um, and as I said, that's 60 shares in total, 57 of which are committed. So three further shares if anybody's interested. Um, if you haven't already paid your first 80%, you're a very naughty boy and Sophia or James will give you a slap on the wrist and a kick, kick in the butt. Uh, please do, because we, we've we promised to pay the auctioneers um, the moment, obviously, straight away um, after we've bought the wine. Um, I've looked after these projects in the past, but I'm delighted to introduce our new colleague. Oh, he's just gone off video, Nick Daniel, who's joined the team just a week ago, and he's going to be looking after some of these projects in future. But basically, uh, Tom and Laurent and I are in coordination in terms of making sure the bids are the bids we need within the budget we've set, um, but also for the wines that are on our shortlist. Um, I'm very excited. I, I, Tom and I have skin in the game as well. 2020 is my wedding year, and I, I've always been a I've always been a Nuit Saint Georges skeptic in the past. As a long term Burgundy collector, I very much uh, I feel the passion that Emmerich and Laurent have given as to why the the appellation of Nuit Saint Georges. Um, is, is benefiting from these more solar years. So I'm very excited to have the um, chance to have my wedding year, not only with the, uh, the Hospice de Bonne, Premier Cru Volnay and Merceau that we have um, from our uh, Hospice de Bonne um, uh, bids, but also the wines that we're hoping to buy on Sunday um, in collaboration with Laurent. Um, 
after the after the auction, um, we'll you know type we'll work out all the numbers and send you the final invoices that will cover the twenty percent plus or minus and um, whatever the bids turn out to be in terms of how we've spent our budget. But just to reassure everybody, if we're not happy, you know we have a short list of wines. If we're not happy with the wines that we're getting or or our budget, uh, then we will no bid. We're quite prepared. Uh, you know, this is an auction. We're quite prepared to no bid if we can't get the wines we want um, within our budget. We have to do that because we have skin in the game and we're looking after our club members, our club members' funds. So after the successful bids, we hope, the wines will be transferred uh, for safekeeping and for the élevage uh, to the Maison Édouard de Launay. And we're very much hoping, as Tom said, that come the autumn, we'll be doing tastings and hopefully visits uh, so that you can go to, uh, we can actually get out of our homes and actually go and visit the marvellous, uh, the, mar the marvellous Maison of uh, Edouard de Launay and actually take, uh, visit them, see some of the wines. Obviously there'll be Zoom events and so on in the interim. So uh, delighted to have everybody on board and thank you again to Emmerich and Laurent uh, for being so kind as to join us this evening. Thank, thank you, Nate. With great pleasure. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Emma.